Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and today I'm going to be talking about Vertex Paint Mode, which you can see here if you hit tab, and it's right there at the top. So to get started, I'm not going to need this cube, so we can delete that with X, and add in a plane. I'm going to scale that up a little bit so we can work with it, and I'm going to hop into Edit Mode real quick and add some subdivisions, which you can do by right-clicking, and it's right at the top of that list. So now that we got some nice geometry in here, I'm going to hop back into object mode. And I'm just going to draw your attention real quick here to the object data tab. And in particular, this panel right here that says vertex colors. So we're going to be using this a lot here, and we don't really need any of this stuff. So now we're going to hop into vertex paint mode. And I'm just going to set up the toolbar at the top by hitting view and tool settings. So we have those working for us. So what the heck is vertex paint exactly? Vertex paint is when you apply a color to a certain vertex. So when I just went into edit mode and added a bunch of vertices in, it was kind of like turning up the resolution. So it's a little bit similar to weight paint and it's a little bit similar to texture paint. Let's just do some basic stuff here. If you right click, you can get a little color picker and that's the color you're painting with. So you can get a nice orange and just do whatever you want on there. Once again, we've got radius and strength up here, so you can use those if you need to. I'm just going to get a nice big smooth section here. Okay. Now we have a basic vertex painting, and I'm going to show you about layers, which you can find over here, like I mentioned. So once you add one in, it will completely duplicate what you had before, and if you want to reset this, you just put the color picker in the middle at white, or whatever color you want it to reset to, hit paint and set vertex colors, which you can also do with shift K. So if I put this green and did shift K, it's all green. Now I'm just going to do another layer here of something else that I can show you some other interesting things with later. So say I had this, and now we've got a couple of layers. I'm just going to do one more real quick, which is just going to be black and white. So I'm going to reset to white, shift K to reset the canvas, and I'm going to change my paint to black and just get a nice little segment of this going. Cool. So now we have a couple of different color canvases and a black and white one. So what even is the point of all this? That's an excellent question. If we hop over to the shading tab here, I can show you pretty easily. So if we add a new material to our plane, we get this monstrosity by default. And to add in our vertex colors, we can do Shift A, Input, and then Vertex Colors. And I'm just going to drop in all of these in order. That wasn't in order, but... <laughs> All right, so now we got those ready, and I'm just going to set the object data tab again so we can see our vertex color layers. All right, so a good thing to note about this is when you're trying to render and see how it looks, if you're in vertex paint tab, it will display the layer that you have selected. So being in object mode is a good idea so you can just see the actual result that you're going to get. So I'm just going to plug this top one into base color and immediately you can start to see the effect that it would have. I'm also going to use cycles here instead of EV. And if I drop this into color, you can see there's that color. And with the black and white layer, we can plug it into any of these, and the black parts can be one value and the white parts can be a different value. So if I drop it into metallic here, you can see the black painted part that I had is less metallic and the white painted part is more metallic and we can drop that into roughness too and get an even more stark difference i'm just going to cut these off with Control right click and then we're back to just the color so a cool thing you can do with colors is go to the color and then mix and you can mix your layers together and get some really interesting results especially if you switch into a different blend mode like divide for example you get this crazy thing, which can look cool if that's what you're going for. And then you can drop in your metallic, and you can get all sorts of really interesting results 
all without using any textures that you have to manage or save or do anything annoying with. So I think that's the biggest strength of Vertex Paint. Alright, I'm going to switch gears here and show you another practical application that you might want to use Vertex Paint for. This is using a technique that I learned from the Wayward Art Company, and if we drop in a monkey head with Shift A, you can see that a little better. Numpad period to zoom in. And if we do Control 2, that will make it nice and smooth. And then we can right click and then do Shade Smooth. I'm going to go over to the Modifier tab here and just apply that modifier so that it's all applied in there. Alright, now that we have all that set up, we can go back into Vertex Paint and use Paint Dirty Vertex Colors. And that will get all the tighter areas to be darker, which can be really useful when you're working with materials. So you can use this to get edges that are sort of like damaged and scratched up and use this texture to differentiate which parts are damaged and which are more clean. So let's add in another material for this monkey head and once again add in this vertex color layer. Let's hop back into object mode so we get realistic results. So now I'm just going to take the color and plug it into subsurface. And this is the technique that I mentioned that I learned from the Wayward Art Company. It will make it so that the thinner areas have more light passing through them, which is what happens in real life when you have an organic object like a monkey head. And this is really good for skin shaders and things like that. But if we replace the light, you can really see it coming through and the thinner parts which just looks really nice. That's pretty much all I have on Vertex Paint. I hope you learned something useful from this, and I'll catch you again in another tutorial. Cheers!